Hello, this webinar is titled Heroism, Bravery, and the Value of Life, and it's a part of the 10-part series on the 100-year anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. Uh, it's kind of a complimentary webinar to the one on the st six stories of heroism and bravery that included stories about Major Archibald Butt, Miss Elizabeth Evans, Benjamin Guggenheim, the Bandsmen, the Titanic Engineers, and Reverend John Harper. Again, for this short webinar, I'll be using some ideas and narrative from the book, uh, The Sinking of the Titanic. And these concepts include things on bravery, courage, morality, faith, manhood, womanhood, and Western culture. And I'll present them as it's told in the book. If you find these ideas uh, troubling or offensive, um, you can choose not to watch this webinar. But here we go. Said one survivor, speaking of the men who remained on the ship, there they stood, Major Butt, Colonel Astor, waving a farewell to his wife, Mr. Thayer, Mr. Case, Mr. Clarence Moore, Mr. Widener, all multimillionaires and hundreds of other men bravely smiling at us all. Never I'd see, had I seen such chivalry and fortitude, such courage in the face of fate, horrible to contemplate, filled us even then with wonder and admiration. The one alleviating circumstance in the otherwise immitigable tragedy is the fact that so many of the men stood aside really without the necessity for the order women and children first and insisted that the women should first have places in the boats. There were men whose word of command swayed boards of directors, governed institutions, disposed of millions. They were accustomed merely to a pronouncement, and a wish was granted them. Thousands of dollars were posted at their bidding. The complexion of the stock market altered hue when they nodded. They bought what they wanted. But these men stood aside. One can see them, and gave place not merely to the delicate and the refined, but to the scared Czech woman from the steerage department with her baby at her breast, to the Croatian with the toddler by her side. There was no debate as to whether the life of a financier, a master of business, was rated higher in the scale of values than that of an ignorant peasant mother. Whether she wore rags or pearls, a life was given for a life with no assertion that one was priceless and the other comparatively valueless. Chivalry is a mild appellation for their conduct. Some of the vaunted knights of old were desperate cowards by comparison. A fight in the open field or jousting in the tournament did not call out the manhood in a man, as did the waiting till the great ship took the final plunge, and the knowledge that the seas round about were covered with loving and yearning witnesses whose own salvation was not assured. To many of those who went in the boats, it was harder to go than to stay there on the vessel, gaping with its mortal wounds and ready to go down. It meant that, tossing on the waters, they must wait in suspense, hour after hour, even after the lights of the ship were engulfed in appalling darkness, hoping against hope for the miracle of a rescue dearer to them than their own lives. In one of God's providences, the seas were calm after the sinking of the Titanic, so that the uh, rescue boats... Uh, were able to wait and to be rescued, and this is certainly not true of the North Seas at all times. It was the tradition of the Anglo-Saxon heroism that was fulfilled in the frozen seas during the black hours of Sunday night. The heroism was that of the women who went, as well as the men who remained. Thus, one of the great uh, ironies of the Titanic tragedy is this. It's that she became a symbol of duty and faith, Husbands literally looked into the eyes of their wives and children, whispered tender last words, and lowered their families into lifeboats with the full realization that they would never see them again. It was this spirit of sacrifice that inspired First Lady Nellie Taft, the wife of uh, President Taft, uh, to honor the spirit of this sacrifice by mounting a national campaign to raise funds for a monument which would carry the inscription to the brave men who gave their lives it was this spirit of sacrifice that motivated first lady Nellie Taft the wife of President William Howard Taft to honor this spirit by mounting a national campaign to raise funds for a monument which could would carry the inscription to the brave men who gave their lives that women and children might be saved this monument is about a mile and a half south of the Washington Monument the structure was built in Washington, D.C., using the $1 donations of American wives. Mrs. Taff explained, I am grateful to do this in gratitude 
to the chivalry of American manhood. Three decades later, C.S. Lewis, an English author, wrote a book called Mere Christianity, along with some other books, and in one of those uh, writings, he included this short paragraph of the idea of men without chests, and he was commenting on the lo loss of manhood and bravery. And these were his thoughts as he was wondering about society. We make men without chest and expect them... Uh, C.S. Lewis in the 1940s, several years later, not writing about the Titanic, but a great author in his period, wrote about this concept of men without chests as an um, encouragement to us to understand where this kind of manhood comes from. And he was asking this question even as manhood was diminishing at his time. We make men without chests and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and then bid the geldings to be fruitful. And he was speaking about how manhood was in decline and the value of manhood already in the 1940s. And he's a profound author of a book, many books, The Chronicles of Narnia, but Mere Christianity as well. As we wrap up this webinar, I'll use this last line of the dedication again. Of each of them, let it be written, as it was written of a greater one, he died that others might live. And here are our questions for consideration. What is bravery and where does it come from? What kind of worldview values life? Are all cultures the same? Has Western culture lost something valuable? Do we have men without chests in society today? I'll refer you to, to, you to these two resources that I've highlighted before, the 21-Day Faith Experiment and the U.S. Civics Training Center. My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.